Hi, we're going to take a look at the grading of a question, um, an FRQ from 2013 AP's test, question number five. And you can see that this question right here, um, you can tell on the outset that there's some kind of inference test going on. And just from looking at the symbols, you see that it is going to be a two proportion Z test that it's going to be talking about. And there are two groups, um, men that are in meditating, that meditate, and then there's a control group, men that don't meditate. So you can tell just from looking at the alternative hypothesis, they are thinking that medication, you know, meditation might reduce their blood pressure. At least that's what's hypothesized. Now A says it's asking you to conclude um, if it's reasonable that uh, meditation causes, the key word here being causes a reduction in their blood pressure. So remember causation, the whole deal there is it has to have been um, an experiment to allow us to be able to say causal relationships are in, in effect. So in this case, your answer has to be no. So the first check mark is no, you cannot, um, because this is an observational study and not an experiment because treatments were not imposed. So um, what I'm looking for is making sure that you address that um, this cause effect relationship, you're mentioning that and that you cannot establish a cause and effect because it's an observational study, not an experiment, okay? And what I would like to see a little bit more is that treatments were not imposed. Okay, so um, they were pretty easy on people this year that, that just by saying that it's an observational study and not an experiment gave them that justification. I would have made it a little bit tougher. I would have made sure that um, the words treatments were not imposed would have been in there, but it ends up this was enough. And so there are three points available for this particular question, okay? Um, making sure also that you have context in here, um, making sure that that's there too to get you um, full credit. Um, so that's what we're looking for for part A in this question. Now B says, the psychologist found that of the 11 men who participate in daily med med meditation, zero of them had high blood pressure, okay? And then they talk about something really fast and it says, why is it not reasonable, okay, to use a normal approximation? Now, remember that to use a normal model, um, you need to make sure that the conditions are met. That is the whole premise here between condition number four. The nearly normal, if you're working with T tests and T intervals, but suck fail is the condition for normality if we're working with proportions one prop z or two prop z like this one is so really what they're wanting you to do is to show that the success failure condition does not work in this particular scenario all right now you can do all nine conditions if you'd like okay but you can know that just knowing this they're only going to be looking for your suck fail condition so let's take a look at what the answer is that you would get credit for for this particular problem. The first thing that I want to make sure that you see is that you have to make sure you can say that the success failure condition um, did not work or something like that. It has to be at least 10. And there has to be a verbal component to that particular answer. And they actually talk about that, that it is not met because it needs to be at least 10 and it wasn't. There has to be some kind of verbal conclusion. Now, there was a lot of things that the AP was looking for to give full credit because this was barely, that answer is barely worth anything. Okay, number one, you're going to need to show your work. That means for group number one, which is the med meditation guys, and also for group number two, the, the control group, the non-meditation -medit guys. So work is shown here, so I'm going to give you a check mark. If you do not show your work, that means you don't show the formula, you don't show substitution in the formula, and you don't show what the resulting n times p hat, n times q hat would be. Okay, you're not going to get credit. The next thing it's going to be looking for is, did you use the right subscripts? MM, MM, CC, CC. All right, so subscripts is going to be worth another check here that they were looking for. Then the other thing that you have to do is you have to show the comparisons to 10. And you'll notice that this student right here showed X's to show that it was not greater than or equal to 10, okay? So there has to be, okay, a comparison to 10, 
and some kind of indicator that it did not work, this person did it just fine. They have all their comparisons to 10. Okay, so there are four checks for this particular problem. Um, they have gone through, if you look at the bottom part right here, that the condition is not met. Um, a normal approximation cannot be used, just making sure that they're cementing that verbal, that verbal conclusion. Go back to the question and reuse their verbiage. Use their words to say that it was not met. Okay, so there are four checks right here. My person got all four of them right. So there we go, four out of four for this particular problem. Now, the hardest part about this problem is actually part C. And this is one of the reasons that we spent last week in class talking about on that chapter 19 p-value and simulation um, process. This is the reason, one of the two times that it pops up in the, <clears throat> in the FRQs. So it gives you um, a bunch of simulated um, um, <clears throat> results. 10,000 <clears throat> times, <coughs> sorry about that, <clears throat> the simulation was run 10,000 times and what you're seeing here are the differences. This, is prob this problem is just like problem number two from the review that we did on Monday, Tuesday, okay? So these are the differences that we can see, all right? And um, it says based on the results of the simulation, so that means we're gonna get our results based on that. So, um, what can be concluded about the relationship? So really the goal here is to calculate a p-value based on the results of this particular histogram, okay? But you gotta know what to use to be able to come up with the results, all right? For our particular sample of men, um, you have to know what p-hat meditation minus p-hat control group was. So in this particular um, sample that was given in part B, Zero out of the 11 men that meditated had blood pressure, minus eight out of the 17 men had high blood pressure in group number two, which means that this thing right here is the value that we want to calculate the p-value for, okay? So that's what we need to do. So the very first check mark is, did you realize that you had to figure out what that sample difference was for our particular result? And that is the, result, the, the results that we got from part B. All right, so that is the first check. That is not the p-value. That is just the difference between the proportions p hat m minus p hat c. Well now, I'm gonna go down right here. There's a lot of writing that this student did, but I'm gonna go down here at the bottom and talk about how we did it. We want the p-value, which is the probability that our p hat meditation minus p hat control, all right, and remember, we're doing a one-tail test on the left-hand side that it is less than or equal to negative 0.47, okay? That is what we're looking for, okay? So we have, it's sort of like we have a, a, a pseudo-normal model that we, sort, we got simulated-wise, okay? It has a mean and a standard deviation associated with it, okay? Our sample result is negative 0.47, and remember, this area right there corresponds to the p-value that we're looking for. And you can count up, well actually you don't even have to count, you can look up here and see that there are 76 results that had that value or lower. Well, it's the only one actually, okay? So we end up getting 76 out of 10,000, which is equal to 0.0076. That is the p-value, and we know if the p is low, we reject the hoe. So now in the conclusion, what we're gonna be looking for, all right, oh, hold on. You need to make sure that you have a check mark, all right? What I wanna see is a check mark for setting up that particular um, inequality, and also the next check, the third check, is for finding out that that 0 0.0076 is the p-value associated with this simulation. So we have one check for finding the difference, one check for setting up the um, inequality here for the probability that we're trying to find, okay, that represents the p-value, and one for the actual p-value, okay? So now in the conclusion, all right? So in the conclusion, what I'd like to see is using a two-proportion Z test, make sure you have a check for that, okay? Make sure you state your p-value is 0 0.0076 and that is less than the alpha level 
a 0.05. If you did that, give yourself a check for that. Make sure that you reject the hoe. If the P is low, reject the hoe. Give yourself a check for that. And the final thing is that you, I have evidence, okay, that, okay, use the words of the question, the words of the problem, okay, that our ha says that, that meditation is going to reduce blood pressure, all right, so that that meditation reduces blood pressure, okay, all right, and that right there would be the last check right here for this particular problem. All right, so there are seven checks for this one. Um, my person got all seven of them. I'm gonna pretend, all right. I can look through right here and see that they did, all right. So in this particular problem, if I go back to the beginning, there are seven plus four plus three. Okay, there are 14 check marks, all right. So that means this is worth a total of 14 points out of the 14, okay. And that ends the grading of this particular question.